Have you ever wondered what makes a monarchy so captivating? Is it the majestic castles, the glittering crowns, or the lavish lifestyles? Or is it something deeper, something that goes beyond the surface-level glamour? The truth is, European monarchies are not just symbols of wealth and power, but also represent a rich history of traditions, customs, and values. Each monarchy has its unique story, with its own triumphs and tragedies. Take the British monarchy, for example. It's been around for over a thousand years, surviving civil wars, political upheavals, and even a few scandals. Yet, it's still going strong, and the royal family remains an integral part of British culture. But the British monarchy is just one of many. There are also more such as the Spanish, Dutch, Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, and Belgian monarchies, each with their own fascinating narratives. These royal families have not only survived but also adapted to the changing times and have continued to hold a significant role in the lives of their citizens. The monarchies of Europe are more than just ceremonial figureheads, they play an important role in their country's political systems. Some monarchies, such as the Danish and Dutch, have limited powers, while others, like the Spanish and British, have more substantial constitutional constitutional roles. Let's take a look at the current 12 standing monarchies in the Old Continent. Andorra, co-principality with two princes, the Bishop of Urgell and the President of France. Andorra, a tiny nation situated between Spain and France, has a unique form of government. It is a principality, which means that it is ruled by two co-princes, one who is the Bishop of Urgell in Spain, and the other who is the President of France. However, despite having two heads of state, Andorra is also considered to be a parliamentary democracy. This may seem confusing at first, but it's actually a very interesting and effective system. The co-princes have largely ceremonial roles, while the government is run by a prime minister and a cabinet, who are elected by the people. It's a system that combines the best of both worlds, the symbolic and historical significance of having monarchs as head of state, and the practical benefits of having an elected government that can make decisions on behalf of the people. The co-princes play a crucial role in Andorra politics, despite not having much real power. Their approval is needed for many important decisions such as changes to the constitution or the appointment of judges. They also have the power to veto laws passed by the Andorran parliament, although this power is rarely used. The monarchy of Andorra has a long and fascinating history. The Bishop of Urgell has been the co-prince of Andorra since the 12th century, while the President of France has held the role since the early 17th century. Over the centuries, the co-princes have played an important role in the development of Andorra's unique culture, and society. Despite its small size and somewhat unusual system of government, Andorra has a lot to offer. It's a beautiful country with stunning mountain landscapes and a rich history and culture. And the monarchy of Andorra is a perfect example of how a traditional form of government can be adapted and modernized to meet the needs of a modern society. Belgium, constitutional monarchy with King Philippe as the monarch. Let's talk about the Belgian monarchy. It's a relatively young monarchy, having been established in 1831, but it has a rich history and traditions that have made it an integral part of Belgian society. The current Belgian monarch is King Philippe, who ascended to the throne in 2013 after the abdication of his father, King Albert II. King Philippe is the seventh king of the Belgians, and he has continued the royal family's legacy of serving as a unifying force for the country. The Belgian monarchy is unique in that it represents the unity of the country's two main language communities, the Flemish and the Walloons. King Philippe is fluent in both Dutch and French, the two official languages of Belgium, and he regularly visits both regions to meet with citizens and learn more about their concerns. The Belgian monarchy is also known for its commitment to public service and philanthropy. King Philippe and Queen Mathilde are actively involved in a variety of charitable organizations and causes, including education, healthcare, and the environment. The royal couple has also made efforts to promote cultural exchange and understanding, both within Belgium and abroad. Despite its relative youth, the Belgian monarchy has had its share of challenges. In recent years, there has been debate over the cost of maintaining a monarchy in a modern democratic society, and there have been calls for the royal family to adopt a more modest lifestyle. However, the vast majority of Belgians continue to support the monarchy, and see it as an important symbol of their national identity. Denmark, constitutional monarchy with Queen Margaret II as the monarch. Now let's talk about the Danish monarchy. The Danish royal family has a rich history dating back over a thousand years, and today it remains a beloved institution and an integral part of Danish culture. The current Danish monarch is Queen Margaret II, who has been on the throne since 1972. She is the first female monarch of Denmark in over 500 years and has been a popular and well-respected figure throughout her reign. Queen Margaret is known for her love of the arts and her dedication to preserving Denmark's cultural heritage. One of the unique features of the Danish monarchy is that it is a constitutional monarchy, which means that the monarch has limited powers and acts mainly as a ceremonial figurehead. However, the Danish royal family is still highly respected and regarded as an important symbol of national unity and pride. The Danish royal family is also known for its commitment to public service 
and philanthropy. The Queen and her family are involved in a variety of charitable organizations and causes, including education, healthcare, and the environment. They also work to promote Danish culture and history, both within the country and abroad. One of the most beloved members of the Danish royal family is Crown Prince Frederick, the Queen's eldest son. He is an accomplished athlete and has represented Denmark in the Olympics. Crown Prince Frederick is also involved in a number of philanthropic and cultural initiatives, including the Prince Frederick Fund, which supports talented young people in the arts, sports, and science. Liechtenstein, principality with Prince Hans Adam II as the monarch. Let's talk about the Liechtenstein monarchy. This tiny European country is known for its stunning alpine landscapes and its unique political system, which is a constitutional monarchy. The current Liechtenstein monarch is Prince Hans Adam II, who has been on the throne since 1989. Prince Hans Adam II is known for his love of the outdoors and his commitment to preserving Liechtenstein's natural beauty. He has also been an advocate for political and economic reform in the country. One of the unique features of the Liechtenstein monarchy is that it is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, with a highly developed economy and a high standard of living. This is due in part to the country's favorable tax laws and its status as a center for international finance. Despite its wealth, Liechtenstein remains a small and tightly knit community, with a population of just over 38,000 people. The Liechtenstein royal family is highly respected and regarded as an important symbol of national unity and pride. The Liechtenstein royal family is also known for its commitment to public service and philanthropy. The prince and his family are involved in a variety of charitable organizations and causes, both in Liechtenstein and abroad. They also work to promote the country's culture and history, including its unique alpine traditions and the stunning artwork and architecture of the Liechtenstein collection. Luxembourg, constitutional monarchy with Grand Duke Henry as the monarch. The Luxembourg monarchy is an important part of the country's cultural heritage and political system. It has a long history that dates back to the 14th century and has evolved over time to reflect the changing needs and values of the Luxembourgish people. Today, the Grand Duke of Luxembourg is Henry, who has been on the throne since 2000. He is known for his love of the arts and his dedication to promoting Luxembourg's cultural heritage. He is also an advocate for environmental conservation and sustainable development. The Grand Duke and his wife, the Grand Duchess Maria Theresa, work together to promote important causes such as education, healthcare, and the arts. The Grand Duchess is known for her commitment to promoting women's rights and improving access to education and healthcare, both in Luxembourg and in other countries around the world. She is also a strong advocate for the arts and has worked to promote Luxembourg's rich cultural heritage. One of the unique features of the Luxembourg monarchy is that it is a multilingual and multicultural country, with a diverse population of people from different backgrounds and nationalities. The Grand Duke and the Grand Duchess are fluent in several languages and work to promote linguistic and cultural diversity within the country. Monaco, principality with Prince Albert II as the monarch. Monaco is a small but glamorous principality located on the French Riviera, and its monarchy is a key part of its cultural and social identity. The current reigning monarch is Prince Albert II, who has been on the throne since 2005. Prince Albert II is known for his dedication to environmental causes and is a passionate advocate for sustainable development. He has also worked to promote important issues such as education, healthcare, and human rights both in Monaco and around the world. The prince and his wife, Princess Charlene, are known for their philanthropic work and their support for charitable organizations. The princess is particularly passionate about children's causes and has worked to promote early childhood development and education in Monaco and beyond. One of the unique features of the Monaco monarchy is its close ties to the world of high fashion, and glamour. The prince and princess are both well known for their elegant style and have been spotted at a variety of high-profile events, from the Cannes Film Festival to the Met Gala in New York City. Despite its glamorous image, the Monaco monarchy is also deeply rooted in the history and culture of the region. The Grimaldi family has been ruling Monaco for over 700 years, and the prince and princess work to preserve and promote the unique heritage and traditions of the principality. Netherlands, constitutional monarchy with King Willem Alexander as the monarch. The Netherlands monarchy is one of the oldest and most respected institutions in the country. The current monarch is King Willem Alexander, who has been on the throne since 2013. King Willem Alexander is known for his commitment to promoting innovation and sustainability in the Netherlands, and he has worked to position the country as a global leader in these areas. He is also a strong advocate for social issues such as education, healthcare, and the arts. The king and his wife, Queen Maxima, are known for their warm personalities and their dedication to charitable causes. Queen Maxima is particularly passionate about promoting financial inclusion and has worked to improve access to financial services for underserved communities both in the Netherlands and abroad. One of the unique features of the Netherlands monarchy is the close relationship between the royal family and the Dutch people. The king and queen are deeply embedded in Dutch society and work to promote a strong sense of national identity 
and social cohesion. Despite some controversy over the role of the monarchy in the Dutch political system in recent years, the vast majority of Dutch people continue to support the institution and see it as an important symbol of their national identity. The king and queen are highly respected figures in Dutch society and are known for their down-to-earth nature and their commitment to promoting the interests of the Dutch people. Norway, constitutional monarchy with King Harald V as the monarch. The Norwegian monarchy is a constitutional monarchy, which means that the monarch's powers are limited by a constitution and a parliamentary system. The current monarch is King Harald V, who has been on the throne since 1991. King Harald V is known for his warmth and approachability, and he is deeply respected by the Norwegian people. He has worked to promote important issues such as education, healthcare, and environmental sustainability, and he is widely seen as a unifying figure in Norwegian society. The king's wife, Queen Sonja, is also a highly respected figure in Norway, and she is known for her work in promoting the arts and culture in the country. She has been a strong advocate for the role of women in society, and she has worked to promote gender equality both in Norway and around the world. One of the unique features of the Norwegian monarchy is its deep connection to the country's history and traditions. The king and queen are closely tied to Norwegian culture and have worked to promote the country's unique heritage and traditions. Spain, constitutional monarchy with King Felipe VI as the monarch. The Spanish royal family is one of the oldest and most traditional in Europe, with a history that goes back hundreds of years. Currently, the reigning monarch is King Felipe VI, who took the throne in 2014 after the abdication of his father, Juan Carlos I. King Felipe and his wife, Queen Letizia, are both popular and respected figures in Spain. They're known for their dedication to promoting education and healthcare, as well as their efforts to improve relations between Spain and other countries around the world. In fact, King Felipe has been recognized for his work in international diplomacy, receiving numerous honors and awards for his efforts. But of course, no monarchy is without its scandals and controversies. The Spanish royal family has had its fair share of public mishaps, from financial scandals to family feuds. One notable example is the ongoing legal battle between King Felipe's sister, Princess Cristina, and her husband over allegations of fraud. The couple has faced years of legal battles and public scrutiny, putting a strain on the royal family's reputation. Despite these controversies, the Spanish monarchy remains an important part of Spanish culture and society. From royal weddings to official state visits, the Spanish royals continue to captivate the public with their pageantry and elegance. And with the next generation of royals, including the king and queen's two daughters, Princess Leonor and Infanta Sofia, poised to take on more public roles in the future, the Spanish monarchy is sure to continue making headlines for years to come. Sweden, constitutional monarchy with King Carl XVI Gustaf as the monarch. The Swedish royal family, also known as the House of Bernadotte, has a history that dates back to 1810. The current monarch is King Carl XVI Gustaf, who ascended to the throne in 1973. The king is married to Queen Sylvia, and they have three children, Crown Princess Victoria, Prince Carl Philip, and Princess Madeline. The Swedish monarchy has a unique role in the country's political system. While the king is technically the head of state, his role is largely ceremonial, and the real power in Sweden rests with the elected government. Nevertheless, the king and queen remain important symbols of Swedish culture and tradition, and they play an active role in promoting Swedish interests around the world. One of the most popular members of the Swedish royal family is Crown Princess Victoria. She is known for her work in promoting issues related to health and education, as well as her dedication to sustainable development and environmental conservation. In fact, she has been recognized for her work in these areas with numerous awards and honors. Of course, like any monarchy, the Swedish royal family has had its share of controversies and scandals over the years. One notable example is the controversy surrounding King Carl XVI Gustaf's alleged involvement with the high-end nightclub and the criminal underworld. The king denied the allegations, and no charges were ever filed, but the incident did put a bit of a damper on the public's perception of the royal family. Overall, however, the Swedish monarchy remains an important and respected institution in Swedish society. With a new generation of young royals coming of age, including Crown Princess Victoria's two children, Princess Estelle and Prince Oscar, the future of the Swedish monarchy is sure to be an exciting one. United Kingdom, constitutional monarchy with King Charles III as the monarch. The UK monarchy has a long and storied history that dates back over a thousand years. The longest reigning monarch was Queen Elizabeth II, who had been on the throne since 1952. Now King Charles III reigns over the UK after his mother's passing. One of the unique things about the UK monarchy is that it has evolved over time, adapting to changing social and political realities. Today, the royal role is largely ceremonial.
performs many important symbolic functions, such as meeting with foreign dignitaries and attending public events. Despite its long history and enduring popularity, the UK monarchy has not been without controversy. There have been scandals and public relations issues over the years, including the tragic death of Princess Diana in 1997, which shook the royal family to its core. However, despite these challenges, the UK monarchy remains an important and beloved institution for many people in the UK and around the world. Despite the sadness that comes with the passing of a beloved monarch, the UK has a long history of strong and resilient monarchy. The institution has weathered many challenges over the years and has always emerged stronger and more united in the face of adversity. Vatican City Theocracy with the Pope as the Monarch the Vatican City is a unique and fascinating place, and at its head is the Pope, who serves as both the spiritual and temporal leader of the Catholic Church and the head of the Vatican's monarchy. As an absolute monarch, the Pope has significant power and authority, not just within the walls of the Vatican but also around the world. The Vatican's monarchy has a long history of influencing global politics, and many important decisions have been made within its walls. One of the most interesting aspects of the Vatican's monarchy is its system of governance. The Pope is responsible for both the spiritual and secular aspects of the Vatican City, which means that he has a significant role in both the church and the government. Despite its small size, the Vatican's monarchy is a powerful institution that has played a significant role in shaping the world as we know it today. And with each new pope comes a new era of leadership and a new chapter in the Vatican's rich history. Overall, the Vatican's monarchy is a unique and complex institution that has had a profound impact on the world. Whether you're a devout Catholic or just a curious traveler, a visit to the Vatican City and a glimpse into the workings of the Vatican's monarchy is an experience you won't forget. In conclusion, European monarchies are more than just fancy titles and glittering crowns. They are symbols of a nation's identity and a testament to its history and culture. Through the centuries, these royal families have faced challenges and emerged stronger, adapting to changing times and playing an essential role in their country's development. So, the next time you see a royal procession or a majestic castle, remember that there's more to it than meets the eye. These are the living embodiments of Europe's past, present, and future, and their influence will continue to be felt for generations to come. Thank you for joining me on this exciting journey through the world of European monarchies.